What's going on, guys? It's Madman Plant. We are here at Smoke Busters at Cowboy Cup day number two. And I got Natalie with me. Natty. Natty Vibes 420. Natty Vibes 420. And you have a great background with cannabis, especially in the medical field as far as using it as medicine. Yeah. So talk a little bit about your experience and what you've gone through and kind of how cannabis is helping you move forward. Yeah, so um, I had years of major, major back pain because I had cracked my spine and I was on all the pain pills, all the muscle relaxers. And it was actually after years of being on that, that my dad introduced me to weed. I was 27, I'm 38 now. Um, and my dad actually introduced me. He's like, Natty, you have to try this. And I was like, no, it's illegal, you know? And he's like, just try it. So I did and I just cried because it was the first time in years I didn't have pain. And I had forgotten what it felt like to have pain or not have pain. Um, so, but then even then I waited until they came legal. I was so scared, you know, but yeah, I was mad, man, when I found out there was so, such a better option. Well, and I think that's what people are starting to find out. And that's why cannabis is becoming such a threat to everybody because, you know, it is the go-to in so many ways without side effects, without the harsh realities. And you talked about, before we started a little bit about the doctors just handed you pain pills. They're like, oh yeah, let's talk about that real quick. Yeah, I mean, I was on pain pills for years, right? Literally for three years. And I finally went back to the doctor and I was like, I'm having so many, it's more bad days than good. Nothing's yeah, yeah. getting better, right? What can I do? And it was after three years that my doctor said, oh, maybe your body's addicted to these pills. Uh, maybe you should switch to ibuprofen. So I did. And then he said, after several more months, maybe you should try yoga. Uh, so what does yoga do? <laughs> I mean, so yoga helped with the inflammation, right? It helped me stretch out my body and things like that. But honestly, it was that I needed to learn how to strengthen my body again. But mentally, I couldn't handle it. The pain was so bad. So it wasn't until cannabis that the pain was relieved enough that I didn't care. And I actually was able to start lifting weights and stuff. So literally now I can like squat my body weight. Yeah. I don't take Tylenol. I didn't, I don't take ibuprofen. I don't take anything except for cannabis. And most people who have had fusions are in wheelchairs after several that's, years. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So this could have been a really like all life altering situation Completely. for you. Yeah. Yeah. I had a lot of major health things because I mean, when people have chronic pain issues, autoimmune issues start and then depression starts and it, and it just keeps going on and Snowball on, right? Snowball effect, yeah. Yeah, so if you don't treat that root thing and if you don't have a medicine that's good enough to help you mentally, physically, and spiritually to be yeah. in a space to build and strengthen your body, you're just helpless. Well, you know, you know and, and, and honestly, who wants to feel helpless? Yeah. Who wants to feel in a position where there's nothing we can do? And on our podcast, is where I love smoke buses, and we talk about mental health, we talk about physical health, we talk about the smoking, the highs, the lows, everything. And one thing is a lot of people, they're, they're becoming anti-pills. They don't, they're tired of the medicine. They yeah. want to really get better. And when you look at the success stories of cannabis, it's just unparalleled of what's going on, what people are doing to change their lives, how people are changing their lives, and the true value that's all being affected. So what is life nowadays with cannabis? You know, my kids say I'm a nicer mom. Uh, that's and, probably true. I'm and, and it's not because I'm high. It's because I'm medicated enough to where I'm not in pain constantly. Yeah. I'm not nauseous and I'm not stressed. Yeah. Uh, and I'm still stressed some days, right? But I don't have to be on the pills. I don't have the side effects of those negative things. I'm able to function. I'm able to go on hikes. I'm able to do the things with them without being stuck in bed. Well, it sounds like in a way you got your life back. Oh, yeah totally changed my life you know? it changed my outlook and it gave me hope and it gave me something that the pills don't it gave me hope that i could change and heal my own body so it gave me back power you know yeah and power is everything especially in the mind knowing that you can and honestly just living a quality life and if that's why i just don't get how something that can just improve quality of life gives cancer patient like with a cancer patient on over there um loud um packs mm. right yeah. right behind you guys yeah that guy had stage four cancer you know they told him that he was gonna die yeah and they, he didn't have an appetite they gave him cbd was able to eat yeah you know they put his, um cbd on his feet you know he's able to sleep you know yeah. same with you there's a little bit of this enhancement and you're you're yourself again yeah 
Well, pain is just one thing that I use it for now. Sleep was something I didn't even expect. So um, I've had hormonal ups and downs to where I would just lay there and be wide awake every night. And then when I started using weed for it, especially edibles for a longer duration, yeah. I would sleep through the night. And that changed my life just because I was able to actually get rest. And people don't understand the value of rest. So yes. it's not just something to make you fall asleep. It's the fact that you're actually going to be able to have energy throughout the day and be able to be more of yourself, who you really are. Right? Well, yeah, and I need to start learning how to take care of number one a little bit better because I am guilty of that pleasure of burning myself to the ground. But, you know, like you, I'm 35, so just three years behind you. And my thing is, you know, technically we're in our prime now. So now yeah. it's time to kind of run the gamut and yeah. whatever happens, happens. You get one chance at life. And, it's, you know, I was a late bloomer in the cannabis. I only started really smoking around 23. Yeah. And I actually quit cigarettes and started smoking weed. So I guess I hey, quit transition. smoking. But I was like, wait a minute, you could get high? <laughs> And smoke one. Well, fuck cigarettes. <laughs> well, who wants to smoke cigarettes? You know? And it not be bad for your body. Exactly. Now, now let's be real. It's not for everybody, it's right? It's not for everybody. If somebody's looking for advice, for advice, or if somebody is looking to escape, they're going to escape. They can find an escape in anything. They can find an escape in bike riding, right? But we know the root of that is trauma, right? Yeah. It's not the weed. It's the trauma and yes. the escape, right? So we can get a bad rap. It's not for everyone. Not everyone has the self-control necessarily yes. to use it wisely and use it as a medicine, right? Yeah, Just like, like the gun conversation. Yeah, same as psychedelics. Same as not like me. I've always had very, very good experiences on psychedelics. I've never had anything bad, knock on wood. Yeah. But then again, but I've been at right parties for where I've seen people in the moonlight screaming, running around on their knees, begging for God to save them. But you know why? They probably didn't go into their, their trip thinking, what's my intention? What do I want to use this medicine for? Right? It's about how you use it. Medi Mushrooms are a whole other thing. That was a major life changer for me. Yeah. Major, man. Like... I, I read the studies on the NIH website for several months before I dabbled because, again, I'm a, I'm a researcher and a teetotaler. I, I was anyway. Great, and um, I read that it was so successful and people were having major depression and anxiety and PTSD yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Um, and I struggled with CPTSD for, for several things. And um, it was just a day where I was like, if I'm going to do it, this is the day where the medical research says it's for, right? And man, it saved my life. It really did. Well, and that's what I hear. This is the stories that, just like yours, and that's why I love people being on this podcast, is to tell these stories, to share the world, because there's somebody out there right now that is watching you talk, and somehow they've benefited from your story today. You know what I mean? And that's the value of podcasts and you know sharing. It's just letting people know that there is a way, and if you're not connected to cannabis in some form, hear the stories yeah. and it's so cool to sit next to you and realize you know you were in a very difficult position and now look at you smiling on your feet all day it's hard to stand on your feet at these events it is hard to, for anybody right yeah. at our age it's hard to stand on our feet but um before i would have had to take so many pills just to make it through the day and i would ha i'd have to think of all the things i would have to do to make myself better and now it's just like i know i'm gonna have a larger gu a gummy tonight because i want that anti-inflammatory benefit because i've been on my feet all day but it's not like oh my gosh i'm dying so i'm in pain yeah it's like i'm okay and mentally i don't care because i'm having fun i'm enjoying myself the pain's not distracting me yeah because the medicine helps with that too <laughs> yeah and it, it truly is medicine i just wish the rest of the world would get off their kind of their high horse of just trying to control it and just accept it you know it's it's a well, new people way what they don't know well right? yeah and you don't know what, you don't know what you don't, you don't know. know what you don't know i you know my brother and sister they were way ahead of me on the weed game my my brother is 10 years older than me and my sister five years and you know all i thought was the stigma because that's what i had been told so they knew about it and i was so late to the game and i had to go back and be like yeah you were right <laughs> you were right and they're like uh-huh but it's the stigma, even within families, right? But I just didn't know yeah. until my dad, someone I trusted, told me. And well, that's what we have to do is we have to help people and be a voice of trust. And I think trust is a huge part when it comes to doing anything mind altering, whether it comes to drinking alcohol or smoking or psychedelics. It's about trust. It's about the openness in this community. How can we find out more about you? 
Um, so you can connect with me on Instagram. I'm on Facebook too, but Instagram's the main thing that I do. Uh, Natty Vibes 420. Happy to talk. I love talking about this stuff. I mean, I have so many health stories and I love educating people on the different uses for it because it really can save lives. I mean, yeah, you know that. <laughs> well, and we're definitely going to have you on again. I love to get you on our longer format session. Sure. These are our short, you know, on-site podcasts, but we're also starting a mental health panel, which I'd love for you to be a part of too, yeah. that I'm that I'm like directing and I'm getting other influencers and people involved. Yeah. So it's going to be really cool. And thank you Super so much for your story and yeah. the time you spent with me. Absolutely. Guys, if you want to see more podcasts that are coming your way, we'll see you next time. Smoke Busters.